Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we've got our look at some of the games coming out in this next week. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now whilst last week wasn't full of big names, some of the games that released were actually very very good. Does this week have the potential to be a wallet buster as well? Let's find out. First up then releasing on the 19th we have Golf With Your Friends being published by Team17. This is a multiplayer game based on the very popular mini golf and includes 9 different themed courses each with their own unique mechanics, a variety of different power ups that you can use to help yourself to victory, 3 different game modes and a host of customization options for your ball and the fairway as well. This game has been out on other systems for a little while and actually has very positive reviews elsewhere. And to be fair, mini golf or crazy golf is a variation of that sport that even non-golfers seem to really enjoy. So yeah, golf with your friends out on the 19th. Be sure to look out for Team 17's next published game, Shop With Your Wife. That's not really a thing, I made that up. Next game then, releasing again on the 19th in America at least, although it's out on the 22nd in Europe, this is the wonderful 101. This of course is a remastered version of the game that originally released on the Wii U, a game that I bought and enjoyed for that machine many years ago. The basic premise is that you take on the role of 100 superheroes, with you yourself being the 101st, and the heroes can band together, morphing into various forms to defeat enemies. So for example, you could become a giant fist or a sword to take on a larger threat. The original game used the gamepad and you had to draw the various forms, so I'd be interested to see how it's going to be handled on the Switch. I've not seen any of the promotional material for this game, so I don't know what they're going to do with it. Improvements for it include updated visuals, a better frame rate and reduced loading times. It's nice seeing this game getting a second chance, it was a really good game, and it'll be interesting to see how it sells on the Switch. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is essentially an online learning community which offers thousands of inspiring classes for those looking to branch out and enhance their skills. The topics include film and video, which I'm sure would appeal to a lot of people on YouTube, plus a host of others such as music, photography, graphic design and illustration. Now anyone who's seen my Cuphead review will know that I'm a huge fan of 1920s, 1930s animation and I went on to Skillshare recently hoping to find a course related to that. Lo and behold, I found exactly what I was looking for. Jake Bartlett and John Brummett's classes on creating and animating characters in a 1930s style, complete with signature tropes of the era such as rubber hosing, was not only informative and helpful, but also incredibly entertaining, well worth checking out. You can get all of this for less than $10 a month via an annual subscription, but also Skillshare have provided us with a link which will be in the description to this video, entitling the first 1000 people to use it, to a 2 month free trial. It really is worth giving it a go. Anyway, now back to the list. Next up then, coming out on the 20th, you have a game called Cannibal Cuisine. This game sells for £11.69, $12 or €12.99 or $19 Australian dollars 50, although it does have 25% off of these prices until the 31st. Having just watched the trailer on the eShop, it looks very much like games like Overcooked or its sequel, obviously though with that cannibalistic angle to it, although having said that to be fair, it does seem to have maybe more of a platforming vibe to it, and there does seem to be some sort of combat involved as well. There are a few games like this on the Switch now, obviously the two Overcooked games I've just mentioned. There's also a game called Catastronauts, which is set in space, and recently we saw Moving Out, which again has a similar sort of premise. This one is a bit cheaper than those games, so if the gameplay is tight, it might be a decent alternative. What's better than one golf game releasing in a week? 
No, the answer isn't no golf games. It's two golf games, apparently, because the next game up is a game called What the Golf. Now, to be fair, having just watched the trailer again, this looks to be golf in the loosest sense possible. It has a very interesting art style, first of all, that reminds me a bit of the Untitled Goose game. It's a local multiplayer experience, and it seems to be a collection of mini games of sorts based around golf, but again, very loosely. There's one game there that looks a bit like Katamari Damacy, some that look like side-scrolling games, looks to have quite a heavy physics-based influence as well, and actually looks quite a lot of fun. At £17.99, it's a bit too expensive for me for an impulse buy, although it does have 25% off at launch, and it could be quite a decent party game. Out on the 21st, you have Monster Prom XXL. Now this again is a game that's been out before elsewhere, although this Switch edition comes with the second term DLC, as well as any seasonal content that's been released before for the other version. This sees you with only three weeks until Prom, and you haven't yet got a date. Problem being is that you are a monster. Having said that though, so is the rest of the school. This basically boils down to being a dating simulator for up to four players, both local and online. Now we don't have proms here in England, at least we didn't when I was a kid at school. In fact, on my last day at school, they basically called the whole year into the hall, told us that we were free to leave and to not return. They then confiscated all of the flour and eggs that everyone had brought with them to throw at the teachers. Spoil sports. Next up is a game called The Persistence. It sells for £24.99, $29 or €29.99, or €45 Australian dollars. Although again, it does have 10% off, this time until the 20th. Now this game is on the PlayStation 4 and takes advantage of the VR headset and is a first person survival horror game with a science fiction setting. You are based on a doomed space colony caught within the pool of a black hole. The crew have mutated into monsters and you have to gather resources and try to get the systems back online. It looks to be a roguelike of some description. It mentions that the layout of the ship will change every time you die and that you will be cloned into a new body. You can also upgrade yourself owing to genetic augmentation to give yourself new skills and powers. This certainly sounds interesting, it's just whether the lack of VR hurts the game or whether it still functions perfectly well without it. The next game is called Fluxteria and sells for quite a cheap price of £6.29, $6 or Euros 99 or 10 Australian dollars 50. This describes itself as a non-stop arcade space shooter and takes place in a 3D game world. It has four modes of play including story mode, survival mode, time attack and obstacle race mode as well as 14 different enemies and 20 different levels. The trailer didn't look too bad and the price point is certainly on point, at least as far as first impressions can tell you, although the game world did look a little bit empty, which is my one major concern, this might be one to keep half an eye on. The penultimate game for the week then is a game called Monstrum which comes out on the 22nd. Another first person survival game, this time set on a derelict cargo ship and again seems to be one that has roguelike elements. Now I like roguelikes as much as the next person but I do wish sometimes game developers remembered how to just tell a coherent story from beginning to end without everything having to change every time you die. Anyway that's just my two pence worth. In terms of the features, it says that you have to survive a different environment and monster each time you play, use whatever you can to outwit the monsters and escape the ship, hide, distract and run, and try to stay alive, or you'll have to, as I said, start all over again. Another game that's been out on Steam for a while, and to be fair has got very good rating, so what do I know? And finally for this week then, another cheap and hopefully cheerful game, this is Concept Destruction. This looks very much like Destruction Derby from back in the day, but its interesting quirk is that the cars are made out of cardboard. Now although it is a cheap game, it certainly looks the part in terms of the aesthetic it's going for. I really like the look of the cardboard cars and the other nice little touches such as the trees and the finishing line being made out of cardboard as well. 
It says that each of the cars has a unique driving style and there are four different modes and that you can customize how you play. I suppose it just depends how much content this one brings at that cheap price point. If the game modes are fun and it has a few different vehicles, it might be worth it just for a bit of a nostalgia kick of similar games from back in the day. So there you have it, another bunch of games coming out on the Switch this week. Is it a wallet busting week? Well compared to last week, absolutely not to be honest. Another big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please do feel free to check out the link in the description for a 2 month free trial for their service. And be sure to check out our sales video releasing this weekend as well for another chance to win a copy of Children of Mortar, a fantastic game. Be sure to subscribe for a chance to win that. Anyway thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.